if you want to create a waypoints mission for a drone, or even create a virtual tour anywhere in the world, like the Empire State Building, the CN Tower, the Eiffel Tower, or maybe even both, create a mission, then fly it. Stay tuned. But first and foremost, these are the programming languages and used libraries. Thanks to Esri for the great online maps and editing tools, and for the federal agencies that provided elevation APIs at no cost. Go to geo-intel.xyz. In future updates, the same website may host additional tools. You can click your location or browse freely. Scroll to zoom and pan to your project area. This is the main geographic area. This area includes project parameters, and this is the video that you're currently watching. If you just need the KML, leave the camera parameters as is. If you will fly a specific drone, input your values. The default values here are for the DJI Mavic Mini. Every camera has a focal length, columns and rows of pixels, and typically the drone would fly along the shorter side of the image, pixel size, and flying height above average ground elevation. We'll talk about that shortly. To create a set of drone photos or video over an area, we'll call this 2D. These are the parameters in a section. The flight direction, which is an angle between 0 and 360. Percentage of overlap and side lap. Overlap is the common area on the ground between each pair of photos along the flight path. Side lap is similar, but between two flight paths. Let's do a quick design. Make sure you understand the rules and regulations about flying drones in your country. Select a project area by drawing a polygon. You can also create more than one polygon. Create one and only one point to act as a launching and landing point. Scroll up to adjust the flying height and make sure the flying height is safe and above all buildings, trees, power lines, and any other obstacles. That's why you should choose a launch point on a higher elevation. Same flying height, but starting from a low elevation may not be safe. In my case, I estimate a safe flying height of 35 meters. Let's go live, then adjust the parameters. This is the effect of increasing the overlap, bringing it back to default. Side lap, bringing it back to default. Flight direction, moving the whole thing by a step of one meter in any direction. You can also change the step size. Switching the direction knows the start of the waypoint mission. Switching the beginning and end Extending the coverage so that any photo that would even touch the project area would be included. Download the KML, accept the warning, download the photo and video waypoints. If you want to save your project settings and the geometry, click Save Project, so that on another tab at a later time, you'll be able to upload the PRJ, go live, and continue editing if needed. You can also resize your geometry, add vertices or remove vertices, or move the launch point. On a side note, if your project is very tiny and you don't see any photos, scroll or expand the coverage, then adjust other parameters. In your downloaded folder, load the KML in Google Earth, click play me, and see if that's what you want. I will speed it up. These parameters are applicable to Google Earth display. The view elevations how far behind the camera you're viewing the environment. As shown here, the eye is the viewpoint in Google Earth. That's why you see the actual field of view and footprints of the images. The other one is the building height. This is the height of the black box. I use this to guess some elevations from Google Earth. Here, 30 meters was about the height of the highest point in this area, but you can set it to anything you want. Search for Litchi Hub, which I used to load the waypoints I created. Log in or register. Under settings, ensure parameters are as shown. This is very important or the process wouldn't work. Import the CSV, examine the waypoints. At each waypoint, we stop the drone for one second and take a photo. The first and last waypoints are above the launch and landing point. Save the mission, clear to add a new mission, check the settings again. Repeat for the video, we start recording at the second waypoint and end the recording at the one before the last. I'm using the Litchi app to fly my Mavic Mini. I first log into my account, check the settings, ensure to use metrics, show coordinates and battery voltage update the go to home altitude and maximum altitude as well, add appropriate signal loss behavior, calibrate compass as needed, enable low battery warning, in the camera settings choose single photo, and ensure the aspect ratio is compatible to what you used in the planning. Head to the site, calibrate the sensors as needed, load the waypoints, go, ensure you follow the drone and keep it in your visual line of sight, and know how to regain manual control if needed. You should never fully trust any software or app, accuracy can deteriorate for many reasons. This is the footage. We'll Speed it up. Landing. 
Now we'll create a 3D project. You can have it in the same 2D project, but for simplicity, we'll use a new one. By 3D, we mean going around an object and tilting the camera up and down to have a 360 degree view. Create polyline or more. As you digitize, the right side of the polyline is where the camera will be capturing by changing its heading at a launch and landing point. I'll use 15 meters since I'm not flying above the building, but I will keep my eye on the drone to make sure it's not hitting any tree or object that does not exist in the map. Also because the accuracy of the online map may be off by a meter or two. Go live. Spacing X is the spacing between two consecutive waypoints along each side. Angle spacing is the step in the horizontal angle to go from one direction to another. For the tilt angle, choose the minimum, maximum, and step values so that for each waypoint, you get many actions. Looking down is a zero tilt. Looking forward is a 90 tilt. Don't confuse this with the litchy tilt. I should have called it a pitch angle instead. The reverse direction changes the starting point. Now download the KML waypoint. You can also save the project file for future reference or modifications. This is the 3D KML. The number of footprint points is the count of the points along each side of the photo on the ground. It's displayed slightly elevated above Google Earth's terrain, otherwise Google Earth may hide it. The max footprint length is how far we can stop the calculation or drawing. Remember that some photos may never have complete footprints if they view the horizon. This is the final footage. This is a comparison between the design and the actual footage. Thank you for watching. If you found this useful, found an issue, or have a feature request, please leave a comment. Again, thanks for watching, and happy and safe flying.